welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you're all doing amazingly well because this video is going to be deep, dark. So for this video, I'm going back to my past. We're going to be talking about it and my mental health story. If you are going to get triggered, then just click off this video. So do click off this video as soon as possible because that's not my intentions. If you are struggling, there are anonymous phone lines and text lines, which I will leave in the description. I will leave a range of them because I know not one can help, but another one could be an alternative. So yeah. So I'm gonna start off it back into primary school. So this is between five and 11. These are the years where I started to get bullied for my weight. Now I did stand out and I still do, that I'm not the skinniest of people. I do highly struggle with my weight and that's always been a thing for me. However, my mental health didn't take a toll until about year seven. This is where I've moved schools. I've had a gr new group of friends and towards the end of year seven, so in January 2014, my nan died. July 2014, my other nan died. Around July, um, I also lost my best friend, we had a fight. We're good friends now, we're not best friends anymore, but we are good friends, so that's all that matters. Um, also around this time, I started to self-harm. Like, also, I just wanna point out that during year seven and eight, I wasn't the nicest of people. I said nasty things, and I truly regret that. Also, I just wanna point out, like, a lot of these, like, year seven and eight a complete blur to me i literally physically cannot remember anything i've done or did like like yeah right i don't remember an absolute thing so if i've done something i am sorry for it so year nine has been a complete big year for me i went into the year with an online relationship it lasted about four months go me um it was my first relationship as well i don't know if you want to class it as a relationship but yeah that happened I also had a great group of friends, which, um, it didn't really end well. So before, like, around my 14th birthday, everything collapsed. So I broke up, my boyfriend broke up with me because he, like, stopped loving me and everything. And, like, I guess it was because of my mental health. But, hey, I also fell out with uh, all the friends that I had with. I'm not going to go into detail of who they were, what happened exactly, but just looking back, it was a bit pointless, it was stupid, everything I said was stupid, and I'm sorry that we argued and everything. Um, during that time as well, I also went into counselling, that was only seven weeks. A bit pointless, but you know. Um, and towards like near Christmas, I also took my first overdose. Um, it was kind of, everything was just overwhelming, everything was just collapsing. It was a mess. Um, I didn't tell anyone until about a year later. So, yeah. No one knew about it. It was my biggest secret for such a long time. And now I'm telling the world about it. It's, I guess, the only reason I'm telling people now is because I'm a completely different person. So, 2016. Whoa. Uh, April 2016, I finally got seen by cams. I can't remember going to the doctors or anything about this, but yeah, I was seen by cams. I was put onto their like assessment team. So I got to like see a various of people and like, like you know, um, April, 2016, I took two overdoses on a Friday and a Monday. On the Monday, uh, the both days that my school found out and on the Monday I was sent to A&E, but then like discharged because there was like no serious damage or done. Um, Moving on to May, the, f the same year, I took something. I ended up staying in hospital overnight and then the day after I had a camera down my throat to see if like anything had happened. Nothing had happened so I was able to be discharged. Everything was going okay. It was like May half term. After May half term, everything went again. I also at this point I had social services involved so this was like the only assessment sort of worker for like six weeks but lasted for like two months but okay um so that happened and towards the start of July and the end of June um also my best friend Mary had moved away to live with her dad but she was back by the time this thing was about to occur so on the Tuesday of like the week before July 2016 I took the thing that I took in May again. I went to A&E, I was discharged the same day. 
I did the same thing Friday. I was sent a &E, discharged the same day, even though I had done a bit more damage. Then I lasted the weekend. I saw Tanya Bear. Yeah. Lasted the weekend and boom. Monday occurred. That was it. I was in hospital for two nights. Tube up my nose just in case I was sick because they didn't want it coming out of my mouth because I was so stupid. Um, I know mental health is not stupid and I I don't know if I regret this or not but it's just like an awful thing and I don't know what I was thinking but it happened and I took something that I shouldn't have taken. I took, it was really toxic, it's dangerous and if I, the reasons why I'm not going to tell you what it is is due to the fact that I don't want anyone to copy my decisions. Um, so I did quite a lot of damage. I was in there for like three days. I was discharged. Um, I've never ever been sectioned. After that kind of occurred, I was part of this social service. Social services is a thing where they, so someone would come and see me like every single day for like a month and they would do things. So the result of that is my bedroom got painted because one of the ladies that was with me was kind of the main one, was, a pa was once a painter. So she helped me paint my room thank you for that um the diet i was put on was kind of awful like all i could eat was like soft food so like like i guess in some ways it was nice because summer ice cream it was okay but i used to like obsess eating doritos and i couldn't do that so that's kind of hard and then in september i went for a checkup to make sure everything was okay and everything was good so that was good november come along um after my london residential Everything slipped again. I was back in hospital once again with an overdose. I <clears throat> was put on a drug and by this point I had a new social worker. I was seeing cams fully because they kind of slipped, stopped during summer because I was seeing like this, I was part of this charity work. But they came back, I had a male key worker. However, I didn't really like him or get along with him so I had to like get a new one as well to about February 2017 I was um I was seeing this lady like every week and like she would take me to McDonald's and this is kind of the times so where I put on weight I did not care what I was eating and looking back I truly regret eating the way I did so I was going to McDonald's like every Tuesday I was just talking to her and everything and then that finished in February um in January 2017, I got my new key worker, who was a female, who lasted through with me all the way to January 2018. So, yeah. So January 2017, I took another overdose and was in hospital overnight. I also fell out with friends towards the end of the month, so I got some new friends. I guess during high school I kind of went from friendship group to friendship group um, and I don't mean that in a bad way like I'm I'm glad I met a load of people and I'm sorry that we fell out of so my favorite teacher was leaving she was so caring I adored her and she left like she wasn't that good at teaching but she was just like the kind of the personality wise was a bit different my camera just died when I was talking about that but <clears throat> So I think I was up to the point of my, my art exam. So after my art exam, I ended up in hospital and I took a number overdose. Um, I can't remember the reasons why, but I stayed in hospital overnight. I was put on this sort of like, I had like a cannula in my hand and I've had that before, where it's like to kind of make sure that the kind of the drugs that you take doesn't do a lot of damage to your liver. So that happened. Uh, a week later when I came back I refused to sit all my science mocks because they were like a thing that you had to do and I never did like oops about a week later I had intentions to end my life I had it all planned out I bought stuff um so I had like a I, people tried looking for it they couldn't find it like no one could find anything because I hid it so well um, and that happened and then so I stayed in hospital overnight and the following day I was put into emergency foster care I stayed like I stayed in emergency foster care for one night because I wanted to go home my mum was like saying that oh she's safe we're safe we can look after her 
um, so they wanted me back as well and that's the reasons why I went home as well. It was just a tough time um, and then a few weeks later I fell out with friends, like I don't think you can go through high school without falling out with people, like it's completely normal too. So I fell out with people and that happened. I'm sorry if I keep like itching my face, like it's just kind of a really sensitive topic and like I also have a cold. And then that happened, like, so moving on to year 11, it's kind of a mixed bag. I kind of got a bit picked on for having a YouTube channel. Well, guess what? I'm still here, so screw you. Um, <laughs> so moving on to year 11, it was kind of a stressful time, like GCSEs, grades, me and the world to me, I completely flipped. I didn't, I used to not care about my grades and during year 10, and then year 11, I was revising a lot like too much in fact so year 11 happened i was getting picked on for a bit of my youtube during my gcse's it was just really really hard because i was constantly going to the doctors asking for help literally begging to the point that i used to get so angry because in january 2018 social services were drawed cans were drawed and it should have never have happened to this day, like everyone's like, oh, that should have never happened. Then put it right, and people still haven't. And I know services are stretched, really, really stretched. And that's kind of the, why the reasons why I want to go into the NHS myself. So, so during my GCSE, I was breaking down every day. I was crying constantly. I was just a panic state, and I was self harming every day. And I also had a CAMS assessment during towards the end of my GCSEs like kind of the, across the month and they were like we're not putting you on your like we, we don't feel like you're suitable so they shoved me back to the well-being because like in April I also had an assessment at like well-being over the phone and I was like I can't do it over the phone it's just literally impossible they put me on a wait list for the well-being I didn't do their like webinar and exam stuff so they just charged me but they didn't tell me that if I didn't do it then they would just charge me but to be honest I don't feel like you should be forced into do something that you don't want to do but okay so then they then cams had an assessment me didn't work they put me back onto well-being then well-being discharged me but I was like I never went back to them then I went back to the doctors again I was had an assessment at well-being that kind of got pushed forward and when I had my assessment and well-being in August okay just literally okay they were like oh we feel like you're best suited at CAMS so it's been a constant battle and then I had an assessment at CAMS in October last year and I finally got put on the waiting list however during September and August they were the worst months of that year I was in a relationship that I thought was amazing, however, looking back, no it wasn't. Um, I <clears throat> was an abusive relationship, I need to speak out about it, I feel like I need to be real with my subscribers, kind of peer pressured into sending stuff that I didn't want to do, and I am a person that is very vulnerable and I find it really hard to say no to things so of course I, I did send them and it took me forever and ever to finally say no and I think that's what broke the relationship is because I gave in and I, I, I said I couldn't do this like I would make up excuses like it was obvious that I didn't want to do it but I don't think anyone boy or girl should ever be peer pressured into doing stuff that they don't want to do. It. Like I would make excuses and put it off for days and the school was involved because I told Childline to tell the school because I just couldn't do it. Um, I was told to go to the police but I couldn't because I just didn't have the proof to do so. Like because it's on Snapchat anything can happen and I was kind of scared that I was going to end up in trouble for it. And those are the months during September. I was I started six months. So that was a big thing. It was a big change because all because I got my GCSE results, and I was kind of disappointed in some of those as well. Went to A and E twice with intentions to end my own life. I had suicidal thoughts. I was self harming as well. Um, all of a sudden, between October and November, I stopped self harming, and I think that was due to the fact that I kind of coped in a different way 
which is a more unhealthy way, which was purging. I was purging every single day. This was more than once a day. It was literally after anything I ate, I would go to the bathroom and it was just an awful cycle. And it got to November and I just stopped and I went back to self-harming again. And I think the reasons why I have stopped self-harming at that moment is because I've kept myself busy. And in some ways my coping mechanisms are still really unhealthy. And I have started cancelling this like last Friday, so that is a good thing. So I did hope you did enjoy this video. Um, I also just wanted to mention that I, throughout my time having suffering with mental health, I used to contact Chardline. I can still do that until I'm about 19. And I also now use the Crisis Text Line by The Mind, which I will leave in the description because. I just feel like the anonymous chat line can be really useful. They reply within five minutes, but if you find it so much easier to talk on the phone, because I personally know that I cannot pick up the phone to anyone if, despite me knowing you. Like, I just can't do that. So, if you do you just need to talk to someone, then do reach out, because I don't want anyone of my subscribers suffering alone. Like, you're not alone. Like, I have come from terror to being okay and it just takes time and it takes years and months and progress like progress is a key but the only person that can help you is yourself really so peace and i'll see you all next week with a new video